Welcome back to Velocity from my side. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about user experience, how we think we should measure it, how I think we should measure it in the upcoming years. And um, yeah, I'm with Dynatrace. And what we really should think about is we should think about our, our end users. We should think about whether they are happy using our app or they are sitting in front of their computers being very, very frustrated. And yeah, we are here at Velocity and everything is about performance. So there is uh, a performance impact to the user experience. And that's what we talked about back the years a lot. And that's why we came up with two things. We came up with the W3C navigation timings and we came up with the app decks. And actually, yeah, we improved that uh, really a lot, and actually I have to tell you that's kind of old school. That's 2012 style, and let me explain you why. Um, AppDex, nice thresholds. What we did, we are applying the page load times on the AppDex, and to measure the page load time even better, we came up with the W3C navigation timings. But uh, looking at the technical stuff today, um, we have there some blind spots now. Single page load apps, AngularJS. With W3C navigation timings, you're getting a single page load at the beginning, and that's it. And today we are living in an omnichannel world. The omnichannel market, meaning we have web, mobile apps, everything combined on our mobile devices, and again, the W3C navigation timings fail. iOS 8.1 doesn't provide them at the moment. So I think looking at page load times is not a good idea. What we should look at is user action response time, meaning from the click, from the swipe, till something appears on your screen, the end result of what you expect. Because that works even if you have just XHR requests. You always have to, the interaction with the user. Yeah, another thing that uh, is a bit annoying is errors. So on a mobile device, we have the crashes. We also have web requests failing, like here in the FIFA app, right before FIFA World Cup started. Uh, the good old known uh, JavaScript error that is going on here. And OK, we all know the funny 404 pages that no one really likes. Um, but uh, I think that's the problem is now people are going out there having social media interactions, publishing there, and basically you end up with bad ratings in the app stores, and no one else is using your app anymore. So we have now two ingredients for a user experience index. But I think there is a third one because we can learn a lot from a user's journey. A user's journey, starting the app, walk through, everything looks perfectly fine, but user behavior, things that I've learned is, uh, is, is looking at the last action can really turn around the whole user experience. It's a key indicator. And that's just one out of many uh, behavior errors that we found in the past. Yeah, so we have now three ingredients and actually I think that is still not enough. There is another thing that we should look at and you all know you, when looking at timings, you have that guy sitting in the middle of nowhere and mainly having a bad, bad bandwidth and the two seconds that we thought that we want to have for this user action response time will never ever work. He would expect uh, in two seconds that the DNS lookup is done, but nothing else. Yeah, uh, that's what I think about are our four ingredients for a user experience index that we should uh, take into account and that we should look at in the future. And yeah, if you're interested a little bit more, then come over to our booth because uh, that's already possible today with uh, Dynatrace User Experience Management. Thanks.